嚟等下，因为佢而家我睇紧佢入咗个 screen。Start ready。All right。Hi, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Brian, uh, senior regional sales VP for Matrix Invent. Thanks again for your precious time to joining me today. Uh, it's an honor to having you here, and I'm aware that uh, some of you know what our company is doing. But those who are joining us for the first time, um, basically, who we are is a Matrix Invent is a regional added distributed and services for process automation and application security. And uh, we have our coverage of our uh, representative and partners in this region, as well as in Australia and New Zealand, uh, assisting and servicing our customers. Okay. And in today's webinar, I'm going to talk about on how the actually the MQTT have been, um, you know, transforming the manufacturing software infrastructure, uh, which I'm going to start. On touch base on the MQTT and Canary Labs because I know that uh, some of you or many of you here actually is partners to the Canary Labs, all right. And uh, finally, and I'm going to talk a bit about when it comes to MQTT, why it is Hive MQ as a reliable, secure, scalable, and easy to implement technology solutions, right? And if you look at the, um, this is an architecture that of uh, Hive MQTT, Spark Plug, and Canary Labs. So basically, they are the perfect pair of a technology that you can have today, All right? So because why? Uh, in most of the scenario, many cases that PLC and devices connecting to an OPC, all right, then eventually connect to Canary uh, Labs, a uh, time series database. Basically, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? Because that OPC is supposed to have actually to uh, make all the solution to be have uh, interoperability with each other, all right? So that, that's, a, that's a purpose of an OPC. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are looking at the advantage, all right, of MQTT technology, it becomes makes sense for you have a second thought in your future IoT implementation or deployment, all right? Because the most beautiful thing about Canary Labs and uh, MQTT is that the Canary Labs already have the logger and collector with the MQTT, which is it allow you to store the message and data straight from the devices seamlessly. All right. So this is another screen that how do you actually uh, looks like in the Canary Labs the MQTT collector is gonna look like. So it can be easily configured to be connecting to the um, you know MQTT broker. All right. So that's a bit about Canary Labs and MQTT. And if you're looking at the future of the manufacturing, all right? So uh, when the industry is talking about, you know, Industry 4.0, which is uh, consists of uh, automation and cybersecurity, advanced analytics, uh, machine learning, AI, cloud computing, smart sensors, and so on. So basically, Industry 4.0, in a general term, that is a, uh, modernization process by introducing new technology and this is all the technology is all about all right and uh, yeah and if there is any other questions that you have you can probably put it on the chat you know uh, we, uh, I will try my best to answer you at the later or at the end of this uh, session if the time allow it doesn't then I will you know coming back to you again all right all right before we are, you know, uh, talking about, you know, the the Hive MQ, which is uh, which is we are a part of the Hive MQ, of course. Um, what is MQTT? Because um, um, many of them, or many of you, may be heard about MQTT, you know, but uh, we may not be knowing what is that. And uh, and we are basically using it every day. Even if, let's say you are you are using uh, your 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 uh, WhatsApp chat, you know. So basically, when you're typing, that you see the dot dot dot, that is somebody is typing there. That it is all MQTT, all right. So that is all MQTT, and, uh, and also you know used by the Facebook, you know. So basically, MQTT is a messaging protocol. It's an IoT messaging protocol, which is based on uh, publish and subscribe pops up, all right. And why is it important? Is that because it need a really little overhead for client and bandwidth. All right. Basically, the client of the MQTT is a very small footprint, which is could be most of the time they run on a battery. All right. 
and uh, it will require very minimum bandwidth. Okay, and it is designed for uh, uh, a reliable communication over unreliable channels. All right. So which means that if let's say that you have a scenario where a device is in a very remote area, then um, potentially they're using a satellite or maybe you're using some some kind of a SIM card or over the mobile network, which is unre unreliable channels. All right. And and it comes with three QoS levels. So QoS is a means of that uh, how serious the data can the message can be transferred over. Okay, so they have a three quality of service, which is uh, QoS one, uh, QoS zero, sorry, uh, which is fire and forget. And also means that I I will just ensure that the data will be transmitted once and and that's it. But if let's say there's any disconnection of it, you know, during the message from the client to the broker server or to the server. And it doesn't resend again. And QS1 is actually ensure one time. All right. Ensure one time means that you will ensure that the data is being transmitted over. Okay. And the uh, last one is a Q, but but again, the QS1, I'll go back to the QS1. It is con it, sometime it could be a, a situation where the data was you know cut off in the middle and the data will be retransmitted again and potentially there's a duplicate of the data would happen. Okay, if compared to the QoS two, which is it will ensure that the data are being transferred once only. All right, so it doesn't have a a problem that you might see in the QoS one where a duplicate data and uh you know is possible to happen. Okay, and uh, MQTT five is the best you know scenario for the IoT industrial Internet of Thing. Okay, so this is uh, this is how they look like, you know, as an overall diagram. On the left hand side, you have a smart sensor as a publisher, and which is publish the data and message to the Hive MQ broker or the MQTT broker server, and eventually we will publish again to the subscriber, which is it could be a machine, it could be a, a backend application. All right, so and reasons that you know the people uh, or the industry or the or, or the businesses actually looking at the you know a, a deployment or modernizing the the infrastructure of the manufacturing or the factory is that uh, first thing is to improve the factory efficiency all right and then the, you want to optimize the movement of the goods and between the plants all right and then uh, uh, finally is that you want to also to measure uh, the and increase the OEE, okay, the which is referring to the reliability of those, uh, uh, you know, um, of the dev devices and equipment, all right. And of course, that you know, in order to achieve a modernization, we will need to look at what we have now, all right, okay. So I, I, before I'm going to proceed further, um, I think, I guess some of you might be from the oil and gas industry, may not be the, you know, factory or manufacturing environment, but doesn't stop you, that doesn't stop you to look into the, into the IIoT, all right, and also the MQTT as a technology, all right, itself into your implementation of future project deployment, because um, MQTT is a universal, which is uh, we have many use cases in different different industry as well. Not only manufacturing, it could be connected devices, transport and logistics, connected vehicles, you know, and so on. So it doesn't stop you. So whatever that you are seeing here, what I'm presenting is actually relevant. Okay, and all right, we're looking at the at the you know uh, current situation in most of the manufacturing. There is always that we're talking about brownfield and greenfield. Of course, that everyone would like to be in a greenfield where the technology, all the equipment and devices will be, you know, uh, will be up to the date. All right, but not many will have that kind of luxury to one shot to, you know, to update all those technology at one go. And there will be a potential where the brownfield, as I mentioned, is that is a mixture of a very a legacy system, all right? And um, and most of the time they they reluctant to you know introduce a change that will might impact the downtime and reliability. And they might also there's a lot of the data silos, all right, in the stack level of the automation from the you know from the shopping floor up to the top floor, you know, data are being silos, you know. And it doesn't integrate it together. So this is also another current scenario that you could see. And ITOT crash, all right? IT, 
in a perspective on IT, they must be looking at agile. You must have a data analysis capability and you must ensure that the security of our IT resources, all right? And for the OT perspective, you know, for the engineer, you might be looking at a safety, continuity and efficiency. So, so there was always that there is a, you know, a differences or the challenges between this group of, uh, you know, department or division within an organization or within a, a, a manufacturing industry. So, and there is a lot of manual interaction with OT software. So this is also another things that we could see in the current situation. And lots of typical to scale and hours of downtime. All right. So this is what happened now that you can't see what is the, you know, the, the, the scale out, you know, the hours of downtime that could happen and what, what is the, what is the impact, you know, from there. And, and of course that, you know, you want to move into organize modernization. You want to have a more agile software delivery into the factories, uh, faster mean time to recover, of course, and uh, reducing the downtime and through the predictive maintenance, easier software updates and etc. All right. And uh, invest in modern software architecture allows organization to introduce traditional IT technology and process into the IT. All right. As always that the, you know, the goals for modernization and also what's next will be the integrated automation. So as, I think this is a, this is a hierarchy that you can see that is, uh, you know, from the level zero, which is uh, most of the time is the automation level that, and then you, all the way up to the top, which is, uh, you know, business planning, logistic, which is the, if you look at the system point of view is a ERP is a finance. All right. And, uh, and before that, there will be a MES, a manufacturing execution system, warehousing, you know, track and trace system, which is on the MES. And, uh, you know, go bottom a bit is a SCADA, HMI, and finally to the top, uh, to the bottom is the sensors and signals. And, and what happened is that um, all this data is silo most of the time. So, and in order to, you know, why you want to achieve a modernization in a factory, you want to have an uh, integrated in automation. So, let Let's look at the uh, one of the one of the scenario here that is uh, connecting the factory in an intra factory environment. So you have automation area, you have a manufacturing area and factory area. Most of the time, all these are you know in a different different uh, level, you know, and the data is not integrated at all. All right. So this is a uh, intra factory, and uh, if you look at the uh, later on, will be the inter factory. All right. So this is. They have a you know different different numbers of factory and you have a HQ probably if an enterprise data center we have a data analysis machine learning service and data lake so so how do we actually connect them together all right so in order to achieve that we we need uh, something uh, we, we call a factory IoT bus all right so where you can see the automation area smart sensors application area and cloud connector which is connecting to the iot area which is consists of iot mqtt broker at the bottom all right as a pipe so that is how we are able to achieve that and but of course that a lot of uh, technical challenges right so the technical challenges what is those is that First thing is that the reliable bi-directional connectivity across all level of automation. So the data should be moving, you know, between the, the level uh, uh, consistently. All right. Uh, but sometimes, you know, that protocol does has not existed yet. All right. And then the second thing is that security is a concern when you start connecting factories and equipment to the internet. All right. So a lot of existing uh, equipment and different vendors with proprietary approaches, you know, um, Probably you have a Siemens, you have a Schneider, and, and different different kind of equipment that talk a different language, right? Talk a different language, and it's always a challenging that how to make them work together. And let's look at the connecting the factory, all right? So in the scenarios that uh, earlier that we have a connecting the factory, the intra factory itself, um, with MQTT you have uh, bi-directional messaging from the gateway, uh, your H gateway or your, maybe your smart sensors that is connecting to level two, which is the MES system, your SCADA system, or maybe your historian, your canary lab system, right? And then from there, you can connecting to the level three and level four, which is uh, on your factory area, which is you have your SAP system that consists of OEE, your PLM, and all these are connecting 
to each other through the MQTT messaging protocol. And finally, is that it connecting to level four. I think the, the cloud is also another driver to, to many industries that are moving into the uh, MQTT, which is your MQTT can be, you know, send the data to the data lake, which is running on AWS, or it could be in a SAP, it could be in Asia, you know, it could be in Google. So, yeah, so that, that is a, what is a thing is that could be, could be, could be transform your silo environment of your system into integrated environment into your system. All right. So, and, and how about in the e connecting inter factory? All right. So it's the same thing that, you know, all the factories, you know, from a one to six is connecting through the MQTD broker. All right. Go through the MQTD broker, go to a standardization of, a, of a MQTT and over the secure communication in the public internet. All right, and high availability, secure and scalable. All right, and finally, that you know, in the in the interfactory connectivity on the enterprise data center, they were connecting to the uh, a very what they call that uh, super reliable. All right, super reliable uh, environment with all your MQT broker running on Kubernetes or OpenShift. All right, to ensure that. Um, uh, what I got a high availability, all right, on the MQTT broker service, so that you uh, you know it won't have your downtime, you know, or eliminate the downtime or reduce the downtime. Okay, and most of the time it, it can't be, uh, you know, um, 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 for manufacturing it's very pretty hard to have a downtime. Once you know, once you hit a downtime, then it will be a disaster for the production line. Okay. Okay, so. I'm going to skip on this, uh, the managed MQTT service, but all right, when we're just now talking about uh, MQTT, all right, so does it mean that, uh, you know, we're going to implement MQTT and all the problem is gone? Um, the answer is no, all right? That's a no. Um, you, um, that is reason why, if you're looking at it, uh, this is uh, introducing the spark plug B, all right? So what is this spark plug B is that? It's a simple open specification that will enable plug and play interoperability between an IIoT devices and IIoT application. Okay, so what does it mean is that all this equipment and uh, application, all right, they already define, hey, you know, we look at the standard. Okay, this is, this is how the message is going to look like. Okay, so we'll define the, what's the topic namespace, the data model and structures, extensive, uh, I mean, extensible process variable payload and defines the MQTT state management. So by doing that, you actually reduce a lot of works to how you want to define the all those MQTT message. So when in your project, all right, in your project, so is uh, you want to have reduce a headache, all right, you want to have an open standard that could be maintained in the future, easily to maintain in the future. So Spark Pub D is the way to move forward. Okay, so how does it, the, the, the structure is going to look like? So this is a, 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 a spot plug topic structure, how it looks like. You have a namespace and group ID, message type, each node ID and device ID. So, so this is already defined in the spot plug B specification. So from there on, you don't have to define it yourself on, a, uh, on, your, on your namespace, all right? And of course that MQTT with spot plug architecture, how this is how it looks like, all right? So you have a uh, devices and sensors that you're connecting to the Eon nodes, all right, uh, which is a gateway. Uh, and all these uh, gateway is already spot plug enabled. And uh, it, because it, uh, 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 it could be a reason why that you need a gateway is because uh, those uh, devices and sensors doesn't support a spot plug or they doesn't support MQTT. And therefore you need to get connecting the gateway and transform it into the MQTT message. But if you look at the bottom there, there's another PLC and devices, which is spot plug enabled, which is can be directly connecting to the, to the MQTT broker of HiveMQ, okay? So, and, uh, and on your right hand side, the application nodes, we have a MES, a history, analytics and application, uh, which is also support the smart plug. So this has become like a, a standardization for the entire message, how they look like in a manufacturing. So you can imagine that you no longer have to do a customization for each of the, every individual uh, environment, okay, into 
uh, you know, to connecting with the application, right? And okay, so the implementation option, but I will I will talk a bit about on the how the actually and why when it come to MQTT and why Hive MQ would be the the best choice, right? So first thing is that uh, if you know if you're aware MQTT, they come in a form of many vendors and a lot of open source that are available uh, uh, you know for you to download and use it okay and why is it hive mq first thing is that hive mq is built for the high availability okay if you look at the bottom you can be run on kubernetes azure amazon uh web services and so on okay uh, it could be in a container the docker containers all right so it built for the high availability if your environment or your customer environment doesn't allow any downtime at all so hive mq is the right choice to you know that you look at and uh, it was scalable you know they can uh, scale up from 10 of uh, 10 to millions of uh, you know topics or equipment you know or devices um security is it, it support the ssl and tls you know this is very important to overcome the it ot ch challenges i mentioned because this it will always are pressing on the security how secure you know the data being transferred from my uh, devices or from my uh, you know the sensors to your uh uh what they call it um uh broker server and after that how does this secure and then move the data into um on the backend application such as sap oracle or maybe you send it to the mongodb or kafka how secure is that and hive mq can support the ssl and tls and it also support the existing authentication authorization system that you already may have using in your organization or your customer organization and um, of course, there is uh, also then support uh, the the you know observability. Why the Hive MQ uh, control center look at the sensor status, whether they're sending the data over or there is any disconnectivity or uh, disconnection happen. All right, and uh, it's support for MQTT five. So this is all the reason why that when you have a customer who want to look for a you know want to deploy the uh, 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 what they call the IoT project, and when you want to you know, proposing the, the, the MQTT, and there is a reason why you look at Hive MQ, okay? There is a reason. But if let's say your customer, hey, you know, I, it doesn't matter that I, I, I lost some of the data, it doesn't impact the operation, then it might not be the, the best choice because Hive MQ is built for the reliability, okay? And who are our customers i think these are some of the you know uh, unknown name that you you could you uh, aware of you know um in the day to day uh, life you know um um some of the customers are building technology, digital products you know uh improving the customer experience creating more efficient operation and inside connecting factories so some of the customers is like bmw daimler e cars you know is one of the um, Connected recall uh, system that is from from Geely. and then uh, Siemens, Honeywell, um, Acer. So those are the, some of the, uh, the key customers that uh, is using Hive MQ in term of the the messaging delivery, all right, between the sensors and to the the backend application and so on. And one of the the, the key, all right, a use case that is happened in uh, I think in German is that. Uh, uh, automotive manufacturing all right if you do have an automotive manufacturing customer so this is something that uh, you can look at as well so uh, how does it use it is that they have uh, this uh, vds it's a vehicle diagnostic system uh, which is a critical manufacturing process and basically you can't go down all right just for 10 minutes go down the assembly line would stop all right and what happens is that they require a very reliable platform you know factory to the cloud connect Activity, okay so this is, a, this is always a, these are challenges that they have and what does the hive mq did is that uh, each of the instance uh, of the, this vds will include multiple test devices on the factory floor and that eventually connected to a hive mq broker okay which is also located in the factory all right and then they will ensure this test machine continues to behave properly if the network connection is dropped and reconnected so what it did is that the MQ, the Hive MQ will ensure the data will be transmitted even uh, there's a disconnect. Okay, disconnection even happened over the unreliable network and so on. And 
it must be fast, efficient, and easy way. All right, the information can be you know transferred from this uh, factory floor to the enterprise IT system, and due to that, all right, it will be it roll out to the twenty four factories around the world. Um, Ten thousand testing devices connected to it. All right, through the Hive MQ, and it's generating four hundred seventy million messages a month uh, without any failure. Okay, so they, this is one of the use case that you know in uh, automotive manufacturing. Okay, and yep. So yep, time is up. All right. So it's about. Uh, I think that we have been start for almost uh, thirty minutes, and uh, yeah, we are welcome for any any questions that you have. Um, just okay. So. So welcome for any questions that you might have. No, I think uh, Willis is typing, so yep, I'm waiting for the uh, question. Okay, uh, Willis, uh, MQTT broker is actually a software, it's a software, so uh, which is uh, running on the it could be running on the most of the time is running on Linux, all right, is uh, running on Linux, uh. And the uh, best thing is that if you want to know more with this, I can also later on after end of this uh, session, I can send you um, a link, all right, where you can download the open source version of it, or you can just, um, you know, create a, a cloud. They, they allow a cloud as well. They have a cloud uh, where you can create an, uh, you know, an, an, an ID, you know, for you to play around with that. Uh, they allow up to uh, 100 devices. Hey, no problem, Willis. Thanks for your questions. Okay. So again, is that uh, if any of you have any questions that you always that uh, you know can reach out to me, um, probably I can type it on my uh, chat again, just in case that you miss out the earlier slide. Um, and also my uh, phone number. Uh, I'm always available for you to reach out and welcome any questions. Okay. All right. And thanks a lot for your participation today and joining me is an honor again. Um, hope you have a great day ahead and good weekend. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.